So we've got the two boxers here. A week tomorrow is the fight. Go to www.itvboxoffice.co.uk to register. So go there now and register for the fight a week tomorrow. We've got David Price on the undercard as well, Adam Etches and Kid Galahad. But the main event, Chris Eubank Jr. and Reynold Quinn. Reynold, welcome, uh, welcome to the UK. Sorry about the weather. So what, what was the temperature when you left Sydney? It was 38. 38, okay. 38 degrees centigrade. Yes. Really sorry. Okay, just to make that clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And congratulations, you had a you had a baby boy last yeah. week. Last week, last Friday. So. And what's uh, what's the little fella's name? Quaid. Quaid. Okay. So you saw him for what a day, and then you jumped on a plane. Two days. Two days. Yeah. Okay. Missed the same. Yeah. Was that hard to leave him? No. But <laughs> 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 well, you got some sleep on the plane anyway. Yeah. Okay. Tell us why you've uh, why you've decided to take this fight. It's a challenge, a lot of challenge, and um, I challenged myself to come over, defend my title, and this new thing, yeah. what I'd like, you'll see. What are we going to see? War, uh, and I'm walking away with my bills not standing, so. I mean, what I saw when you were taking pictures is that you gave your belt to me and let me touch it. In my mind, you've lost the fight already. If it was my butt, you'd never touch it. I don't care what the time is. give you a, a feel of it. Yeah, well, still. It's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's going to be the last time you touch it. It's going to be the last time you touch it. So. Yeah, uh, Why do you think he shouldn't let you touch it? What, what's it a sign of in your this, view? This is, this is a, a world title belt that he, that he worked so hard to get. You don't let your opponent touch it because if Hammond Man says, can you guys take a picture with it? So no, this is my belt. I'm, I'm, this is my belt. That's that in my opinion. He, he, he pushed the belt towards me too quickly. Um, he did what he was told. If it's my belt, it's, it's staying with me the whole time. What did you think of his win over Daniel Gill? He knocked him, he knocked him up. So it was a good win. Um, Daniel Gill is a, a former world champion. <coughs> so uh, full respect to that. And uh, you know, I do respect the fact that this man's come over here uh, from Australia. Um, he's come over to a foreign foreign territory. Doesn't know doesn't know anybody. He hasn't got any fans over here, um, and he's challenging you know one of the most exciting fighters in the world. Um, he didn't have to do that. He could have taken easier routes. He could have stayed in his part of the world and and took easier fights. So in that respect, um, I have respect for him. But that's where the respect starts and finishes on the night. Um, as they say in the military, I'm going to proceed with extreme prejudice. And uh, oh that goodness. belt, that, that belt is, is, well, enjoy it. Enjoy it for the next eight days because after that, it's coming back to me. Did you take the fight as well because you want to make your name better known across the world? You know, big news down under. But did you take the fight as well because this is an opportunity for the rest of the boxing world to hear about you? It is an opportunity, but um, like I said, it's a challenge for me. Um, it's, not, it's not just a challenge, so you're, you're, he's, you're, you're he's, running he's, up a mountain with this he's, one. Mountain is easy for me to run up or sprint up there. Okay. What night you want to see? That's all I can say. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little about your background, Reynolds. My background, my dad's Aboriginal, my mum's Fijian. I grew up, never had my father, mother raised me. I grew up hard, but that's, that's, that's the past. I don't know what I'm the past. Um, I changed my lifestyle around. Uh, with my boss and career, for my family. Um, and I took it on a whole other level, growing up, back home. Um, we caught up in the wrong crew. And, like I said, the boxing is a discipline to me and changed my life. So, yeah. I mean, you hear that story a bit, but you're saying, in your case, that's, that's, that's the classic true story of what boxing did for your life. That is a classic true story. Um, and I guess a lot of lot of great boxers have got a story behind them, um, past and gone up. So I think yeah, I think Christine will know that, and a lot of people will know that too. And your Aboriginal roots are very important to you, aren't they? Yes, they are. My Aboriginal roots are very important to me. What 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 do they bring to your life particularly? Is it is it, is it a a way that you like to lead your life by? Well, it's something different. Um, that my Aboriginal um, roots. Um, the past is the past, but I 
I just I, I, I love the culture, my culture on both sides, on my mum's side, Fijian, and on my dad's side. So it's, to me, they're both both both, both, both the same. Um, and when you have a look at the bookmakers, and they have Chris that sort of some of them have a have about two hundred and fifty to one on to win. I mean, in other words, as far as the bookmakers are concerned, it is no contest. Do you find that a bit insulting? I don't take I don't take notice of it. It's um. So I'm losing money. Go ahead. Rich. Put the odds on me. What am I paying? I don't know what I'm paying. So. Is that about right in your point of view? Are you that odds on that it's not worth having a bet? I don't. I don't. I'm not a betting man. I don't gamble. Um, you know, I believe in in working hard and uh, and earning earning your keep. Not 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 hoping something happens and and and, and, and throwing money on. But um, you know, this is, uh, I've been working for this my entire life, my entire career, to get to this stage to fight for a world title. Um, and to do it on ITV, it's, um, it's a privilege. It's a, it's, a, and it's a huge opportunity. The reach that you guys have is, uh, is unparalleled. So you know, I believe it's going to be a hell of a fight. Um, and to follow in Dad's footsteps. I mean, that must mean, you know, obviously we talk to him a lot about his role in your life and your career, but to follow in his footsteps, how much would that mean? To follow in his footsteps, to follow in all the greats. You know, this is this is what a fighter wants to achieve in his career, to be able to say, um, yeah, I did it, to have a legacy, to have to have kids coming up and looking at him and saying, I want to be like that guy. Um, and this is the ticket. This is the, this is the ticket. Um, having that belt puts me in a position um, to then go and, and clean up these divisions, middleweight, super middleweight. Uh, there's a lot of great fights to be had out there. And, um, and just because I'm fighting for the super middleweight title doesn't mean that I'm forever going to be restricted to the super middleweight division because obviously there are super fights there to be made in the middleweight division. Um, Is Golovkin the one that you really want? You've talked about that before. I don't know how many more times I'm going to say it. You know? I know I can beat the guy. I know I can be. Um, great power. That's what that's what that man brings to the table. Um, but you know, I've 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 sparred with heavyweights. I've, I've taken I've taken beatings throughout my entire career from massive guys who who go up and can never punch harder than. So the fact that he can punch doesn't it doesn't it doesn't affect me. It doesn't scare me. Um, and once you look past that. What, what could he beat me with? He's not faster than me. His defense isn't better than mine. Um, you know, this is a man who openly says he likes getting hit. He likes, you know, he's not hard to hit. Um, you know, in my opinion, boxing is about being hit and, and not getting hit. That's my philosophy. Um, he obviously doesn't share that. So, um, a huge fight to be made in, in, in the future. And obviously we've got my old arch nemesis, uh, Billy Joe Simon yep. is that middleweight. That's another fight that um, I, you know, I want and will not stop until I get. Um, is that an itch that you can't help scratching? That's exactly what it is. It's, it's you know, it's uh, it's it's a right, it's a wrong that I have to get right. Um, you know, it's always it's always hard when, especially when you, you, know, you have a loss and you don't feel like you really lost the fight. And you know that you're the better fighter. So that, that, that's a fight that has to be made at middle weight at some point. And now that we've got this platform here on ITV, um, there's no reason why these fights can't be made this year. www.itvboxoffice.co.uk. Go there now and register for the fight a week tomorrow. So what are you going to bring to the ring then in Olympia? What's your style? What are people going to see? Fireworks. We're going to see fireworks. And, um, I guess everyone skip in be the early end. And see, see for myself. I don't talk myself up, but the mouth is still talking. I mean, you bring two different people. Um, so, go forth, be there, watch, register. Um, so, you don't take you, a step back, you meet fire with fire, you're on the front foot. If you want to play with fire, you can play with fire. So, I think that that's what it'll be.
But you do know that it's going to take more than just fireworks and sparklers to, to beat me, right? Maybe I'll chuck petrol on it. So it just makes it even bigger. You're gonna, so you, you never know what can happen, man. You need, a, you need an army. You're going to need your whole <laughs> Aboriginal tribe to come to beat me. That's how you beat Daniel Gill, didn't you? I mean, think of it the, the second thing. round. So, people, from, from, from the first battle. A lot of people told me against Gill, it's going to take a fight. When you're mentally um, focused and ready, and you've got to believe in yourself, nothing will stop you, no one. Um, coming in to a fight, professional fights, I don't think Eubank would have, I don't think his dad would have took the fight because he's only had his full professional fight. He's been in his dad's shadow for his whole career, even off his dad's name. He has to be his, himself. So the, he's better than, better than his father, but he's, he's not better than his father. I think his dad was the best back in the day. I think it would be better than him, whether he says that he sounds better than, better than him, I don't think so. Um, fight my comes, you will see. And this will see too. So I hear that comment a lot. Um, I'm sure you do, yeah. Living off your father's name, you know. Uh, you're only boxing because your, your father used to, used to box. Um, and it, it amazes me when people say that. Because it's like, as um, what's the line in that movie? You've got the movie um, is it Snatch. It doesn't. It doesn't matter if your name is is uh, Muhammad, Armhard, Bruce Lee. <laughs> it doesn't matter what your name is. If you if you can't fight, you can't fight. You can't do the things that I've done in my career. Um, <laughs> A name can only get you so far. Eventually, if, if, you, if you don't have the spice, you don't have the sauce, <coughs> you're going to get found out. But when you hear people say it, whether it's an opponent or whether it's a, you know, a punter or a journalist or the media or whatever, do you think, I'm going to show them that I am equally as good as him, if not better? I'm not. My, my mission isn't to, isn't to worry about what my father did and, and to always compare myself to him. Um, my goal is to be the best fighter I can be. To, to build my own legacy, be my own man, and uh, and to win my own world titles. Um, the, com the comparing, and you know, his father did that, and you know, I leave that to to the fans and, and to people like him who believe that I'm only in the game because of my father. Uh, for me, um, this world title that I'm going to win in eight days, that's the start of a long and, uh, and fruitful journey. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be in the game for another, for, for at least another 10 years. And my goal is to, to take all the titles, to take all the belts in, in, in the middleweight and the super middleweight division. Um, and here we begin on February 4th. How big a fight is this in Australia? Because you're a big name there, but you want to be a bigger name. This is, this is a big, big fight um, for my career. And from back home, but um, yeah, it's good. It is what it is. Um, to come all the way in for Chris, he's got a big name in the UK, around the world, but the fourth, just can't wait. Yeah, because you mentioned his dad, so growing up you would have known, you would have known the stories of, of Chris and, and Nigel Benn and the middleweight and super middleweight division of those days. Yeah, watch a bit of them. <laughs> it's a good laugh. Um, yeah. um, it's a I good said, laugh? What do you mean by that? Well, it's a good laugh, like the, just the way they are for each other. Um, there was nothing funny about it, their rivalry. Well, well, that was something, for, me, for me, it was some of the most vicious fights in, in boxing history. If you find that funny, then you're not really to, a true fighter. To, well, to me, like I said, we're both different. We're, we're both different. Well, if you find that, thing, that it, type it, of thing it, funny, then it, you're going to find February 4th it. hilarious, because you're going to be laughing out there. It's going to be hilarious. Have you got a game plan? I mean, Chris told us what Chris Jr.'s I adapt to what's Weakness in might be, you know, keeps his hands a bit low. Have you got a game plan? No, not really. <coughs> I don't have a game plan. I just adapt to what's in front of me. Okay. It's natural talent. So you've flown all the way over here from Australia with no plan at all. You're just going to yeah. get in there and wing it? Is that what you're telling everybody? <coughs> yeah, that's what I'm telling everybody. Wow, mm. you're in some serious trouble, my friend. Mm. <laughs> yeah. up now, then. <laughs> I tell you what, we've got a couple of minutes left. Why don't you get the belt so everybody who's watching this on, on YouTube can see you <coughs> the belt and can see what it is that Chris wants to take off you. Are you going to let him touch it this time? I'll let him touch it. Hey, there you go, Chris. I'm going to do you a favour and I'm going to keep my hands off it until after the fight. 
It's a boomerang, so it comes back. It's a boomerang, so it comes back. So this is it. We talk about game plans. You, you know, you, you, you back your natural talent every time. Do you have a game plan as such? <coughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm searching and destroying. I'm, I'm going to go in there and, uh, you know, the ring is my kitchen. And, and you're getting cooked. <laughs> Seasoned, cooked, fried, sautéed, all of that. Might have the right ingredients, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you've got the right oh, ingredients. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Boys, you just want to stand up so everyone can, at home can see you. I'll get one side. Just quickly, on those odds, 250 to 1, where do we get, where do we get that? Oh, I'll tell you after about that. Put down the camera there, everyone can see you watching it live from uh, YouTube space. So, a week tomorrow, then, these two gents, Chris Eubank Jr. and Reynold Quinnan, go to itvboxoffice.co. UK. You can register now. And on the other card, David Price was with us last week uh, in Preston. He's funny Christian Hammer, of course, at heavyweight. Kid Galahad's back in the ring as well. And Adam Etch is uh, also fighting. So that's uh, a week tomorrow. Register now at www.itvboxoffice.co.uk. Thank you very much indeed.